Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at a malicious office document, a spreadsheet that I ran across recently. And the reason that it caught my eye was the structure of the macros. It was a little bit different than what I normally encounter. Before we get into that, though, just going to spend a couple minutes here getting some background, doing some real basic analysis. Um, as you can see here, the results on virus total as of the time of this recording, and it's the 14th of February 2020, um, the detection is still overall fairly low. Only 22 of the, of the 58 have identified this as a malicious document. This was originally submitted at the end of January, the, fir the 30th of January 2020. So it's been out for a couple of weeks now, and, and I think overall detection is still uh, kind of low. We can take a look at this document in any.run, and you'll see that the content of this document is, is really no surprise. There's an image here uh, indicating that the user needs to enable content in order to view the actual document itself, so very typical social engineering. Once that content's enabled, there is this dialog that pops up that is indicating there was a problem with the document and it needs to close, and that's also actually just a part of the social engineering. If we take a look at the process activity, this is also a very common pattern that we see and that we have Excel in this case, oftentimes it's Word if it were a, a Word document, that launches PowerShell in order to then get the next stage in this particular attack. This does deviate a little bit from what we commonly see with the PowerShell. Normally with PowerShell, or, or I would say a lot of times with PowerShell, we're seeing Base64 payloads that are, are then executed. Um, but with this, uh, the authors actually use the start bits transfer commandlet to download the next stage and execute that. So again, just a, a bit of a deviation here from really the norm. If we move over to the terminal, though, we can now analyze the document using OLE dump. And what this reveals to us is that we have one stream in particular that has actual macro code, stream 7. So we can investigate that particular stream to take a look at the actual macro content. You'll see here it's very limited. Uh, we have the auto open function, which helps us to identify the entry point. So this is where code execution begins. But all we have inside of this function is our message box with the message that we saw in any.run and then application.quit. So there's nothing that would indicate that it is attempting to execute PowerShell in, these, in this macro content. Um, in case you weren't aware, 8, 9, and 10, those lowercase m's indicate that uh, a macro stream was defined, but there's no actual code there. So let's just take a look at stream 8 just to, to make sure that that's clear to everyone. Right. So here we have the module, module 2, so it was defined, but there is actually no content. And, and you'll see this oftentimes when macros or when documents contain user forms. The user forms get a macro module defined in order to handle um, events for the different objects on the user form. But if your authors are not actually using those events, say, say a button click, then it remains empty. So the question is then, where does this content actually exist? Well, there's a number of ways we could still continue to analyze this. Um, one thing that I oftentimes do with malicious office documents is just to look at different streams and try to identify, uh, you know, the, the streams that have maybe a larger size. That's what this column represents because there may be additional content stored there. So in this case, at stream four, we have a fairly large amount of content. So to me, that's worth investigating. Um, this is not a macro stream though, so we use the same dash s in order to dump the content of that, but we don't use dash v, so we don't decompress it. Um, when you do that, you're going to get all of that content displayed as if you were looking at it in a hex editor, at least that's the default view. And so what we can do now is just go ahead and, and maybe scroll back a little bit to see if anything stands out here. In this case, we don't have to go too far before we see our PowerShell command. We identify the command, let's start bits transfer, and then get our source. So the question now is, how is this actually executed? Because it doesn't appear, based off of the current structure of this document, that these macros are responsible for doing that. So in order to answer that question, I'm going to move over to a Windows machine, and we'll actually take a look at the Office document inside of Microsoft Office. So once we have this document open, we can now begin investigating and trying to figure out exactly where that content is stored. You'll see, of course, the image that is used to social engineer the user. We have the ribbon here that is uh, prompting us or allowing us to enable content to execute those macros, which we don't need to do in this case. So we can just uh, ignore that for now. 
um, you might find that the content is embedded in one of the, the cells in one of these sheets. And if you look down below, you'll see there are actually two sheets that have been defined here. So let's just simply move over to sheet two. In doing so, it immediately reveals where that command was stored. So we have the exec command, which is where our PowerShell start bits transfer with the ability to not only download that then, but of also to execute it, and then this halt command. And this is actually then, by defining these commands in the cell, the authors were able to then use the auto open function to execute those when the document was opened. And again, what's interesting to me about this was that by inspecting this using OLE dump, we didn't actually see the macro content. It wasn't identified because it was, it was hidden or placed inside of the cell. Um, so that's interesting. If this document had not contained that message box, then OLE dump would not have identified any of the macro streams. So it can lead to maybe some wrong or, or, or incorrect um, conclusions about the document itself. Um, so that's also another very interesting part of this particular technique, although relatively simple. Um, the other thing that you may run across, and I've seen this with similar documents, is that the authors might actually hide that sheet. And so you open it up, you see that there are no macro streams when you investigate with OLE dump. Um, you open the document in the office suite, you see that there is just no way where that content can be located because it's hidden. Uh, and again, it can just make the analysis if you're going into this level of analysis a little bit more difficult. Um, it's actually pretty easy to identify if a document contains hidden content, uh, at least if you're at looking at the document inside of the Office Suite. You can go to the File tab, and you'll see this section here, pre uh, Prepare for Sharing, and it's going to indicate that there is hidden content here. So here, here's a hidden worksheet. If you go back to the Home tab, and you can right-click on the sheet and Unhide, select Unhide, and then it'll give you the, this dialog here that allows you to unhide any of the hidden sheets. Um, I've also seen this technique with Word documents and that there'll be content inside of a Word document that's hidden that contains the script, JavaScript, or some command that they want to execute as a way to try to make it a little bit harder to extract that content or, or do any more detailed analysis on it. So again, uh, just to recap, what, what caught my eye with this particular document was that um, without that, that dialogue that you saw after the macro content was enabled, uh, OLE dump wouldn't have recognized any of the macro streams. Uh, you can put it in a sandbox or observe its, uh, its behavior and see that it's clearly executing PowerShell. So I just wanted to figure out exactly how it was doing that. In this case, the analysis brought me into the spreadsheet and identifying the contents inside of a cell. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to talking to you in a future video.